sometimes they want washing kit. <laughs> Change that bloody tune, will you? <laughs> Certainly, any preference? Not really, just as long as. It... Oh! Just as long as it's appropriate to this solemn occasion. Me, my deathbed, and my impending decease. Massa, massa, I knows the very thing. Great, well, I'll stand in for you while you're gone. <laughs> Blaze away. Buns always make me weep buckets. <laughs> Especially as I've got a pair of their own one when they finish. <laughs> now, Mrs. Brandon, you've got to brace yourself, Lord. It's got to come to all of us sooner or later. Am I right? I am. Uh, but you see, Mrs. Parsons, that's the only that... thing that consoled me was my late husband. It's got to come to us all sooner or later. And after the honeymoon night was over, I felt that oh, much better. Don't I could understand, Mrs. Parsons. But I do love. I do. Death's always been very prevalent in our family, in <laughs> our constitutions. We've been very susceptible to it, Mrs. Parsons. <laughs> Uh, but that's the whole point, you see, Mrs. Partington. Maud's not going to die. What? It's true, Mother. He's been cured. That spring water he's always drinking had polluted him. Doctor gave us those pills to slip into his condensed milk souffles when he's not looking. It's as you or me. Well, in that case, why hasn't nobody told him? We don't like to, Mrs. Partington. He's been looking forward to dying so much. <laughs> the courage to disappoint him. <laughs> then why all the tears? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of all the money we've wasted on arranging his funeral. <laughs> now come on, this way, a straight line if you please. Come on. And I ask you all to remember the solemnity of the occasion. We are here to pay our last respects to a man who is lying on his deathbed. So I shall ask you all to refrain from smoking, playing transistor radios, and indulging games of chance for financial gain. I thank you. This <laughs> way, please. Move down the car, please. Right to the very end. Let the ones behind you get on. There's plenty of room for everyone if you'll just move down the car. Thank you. Right? Right. <laughs> What's all this about? International code flags. Flown by ships at sea to transmit messages. Well, what do they mean? The top one says, I wish to communicate with you. And the bottom two? My engines are going astern. <laughs> and I am dragging my anchor. <laughs> I see. 
Hey, obviously, you haven't got a flag that says get a bloody move and I've got a bulls match in half an hour, have you? Les, don't pay no heed to him, Mort. You'll make your final speech, love, without let or hindrance. Just so long as you finish it in time for me to feed Milkman's horse. Thank you, Annie. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I lie here on my deathbed, surrounded by all those who and whom I hold nearest and dearest. There are exceptions to that, of course. I see you will affect Mother. your attitude. Please, go on, Uncle Mort. Take your time, uh, but don't be too long, because I've got an appointment at the hairdressers at half past two. What about me? I've got an appointment with death. I grant you that's not as unpleasant as going to barber, but for me, in my condition, it's all I've got to look forward to, Eli. I know how you feel. I've got my wife's cooking to look forward to when I leave here. <laughs> you want to go with them too, haven't you? They're bound to have bloody good canteen facilities up there. They do and all. They have a change of menu every day, a change of gravy every week, <laughs> and a manageress with big knockers. <laughs> right then. First of all, I have to inform you that I have left my affairs all in order. I have cancelled my subscription to Exchange and Mart. <laughs> I've collected my spats from dry cleaners. And I've made individual but small bequests to each of you. To you, Annie, I'll leave my most precious possession. Oh, car very much, Mart. What is it? My cat. <laughs> ah, it'll come in right handy next time you sweep chimney, and if you're careful at if you're careful at dandruff, it'll make a most acceptable mould for a suet pudding. <laughs> See you, Carter. I'll leave an article what will help to all things together when your life seems to be falling apart. My stapling machine. <laughs> and I also leave you my torch. Ta. May it shine as a beacon through life's future vicissitudes. May its warm glow in the dank fogs of winter inspire you with the memory of the face I always wore when confronted with life's many and varied adversities. A buoyant, cheerful, sanguine scowl. <laughs> well, mm. to you, Pat, I leave something which will be of inestimable value to your impending bambino. Oh, thank you very much. Just what I wanted. Uh, but do you think you could change it to a squash racket? Pardon? Well, you see, when Nigel's born, he'll need to take up squash as a relaxation from being a professor of difficult sums all day. The gift I have for your baby is not of the material variety. It is a few words of advice contained in a poem by that distinguished Welsh poet, raconteur and part-time milkman, <laughs> John Foreman. I copied it out of a damp Christmas cracker. It goes <laughs> on. Hail to thee, Winston Place, former Lancashire cricketer, decorous at the crease, who on retirement became a umpire, but retired from that too, finding it obnoxious to give people out. God, in your utmost heaven, let this be a lesson to you. Oh, I'm sure it will, if Nigel ever becomes an umpire or God. I thought long and hard about you, Les, and finally I plumped for something what you've craved off me for many a long year. What's that, your smoker's cough? No. <laughs> My wooden arch support. <laughs> May they give you as much pleasure as what they've given me, and may you always cherish them. Certainly. And they'll come in right handy for propping open the coal shed door. <laughs> for you, Linda, I have reserved something very special. Oh, smashing, kid. What is it? My last kiss. Bloody hell, I never knew you had a first one. Go on. <laughs> Blackpool, Bank Holiday Monday, 1922. 
when my late wife fell head first into the jellyfish infested brine. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I kissed the donkey what tripped her. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, if you will incline your head and pucky your lips, I shall perform the requisite. as good as that. Oh, well, I served all through First World War, you see. <laughs> it were only a way you could get lumps out of Kukas custard. <laughs> right, then that concludes oh, my... Thing? Don't I get dumped? Pardon? <laughs> I heard that. Stevie, come uh, out from under that bed. You'll get your braces caught in mousetrap again. <laughs> what are you doing under there, any role? I'm a stowaway. Pardon? Where to? To wherever Mark goes. Pardon? You're not coming with me. I booked my passage years ago. Fine, you sent another bloody boat. <laughs> Nobody wants you when you're old. Not even death. Pardon? I heard that. Right. That concludes my individual bequests. It only remains for me to give you this. In here is details of a treat what I've organised for you. Open it next Saturday when I've gone to that great engraving dock up its sky. Go on the tree, enjoy yourselves, and when the heavens open and it starts raining cats and dogs, think of me wolfing down spam fritters and mushy peas at heavenly canteen. <laughs> the spring water, the great polluter. Pardon? Uh, have you got something to say to me? Well, uh, yes, you, you see, Mort, it's, uh, well, it, well, it's about your death, you see. Uh, how shall I put it? It's, oh, go on, drink it. Any more explanations? I'll miss me bloody balls, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and what do these say? My vessel is stopped. I'm making no way through the water. I require a tow. <laughs> well, go on then, Carter. Oh, Nate, it's Saturday. Yeah, but he's not snuffed it yet. No, and he's not going to snuff it, is he? That's the whole point. Am I right? I am. Um, it's right inconsiderate of him. Open it, Carter. It's what he'd have wanted if he'd lived long enough to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I'll open it. There's no need. What are you doing here? Going on treat. <laughs> it's better than lying on my deathbed waiting for summer to happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting bored to death there. I don't enough to be off your deathbed, Mark. Never felt better. Worse bloody luck. <laughs> Where are we going, any roads? Wait and see, missus. Don't be so impatient. And how are we getting there? You'd not thought of that, had you? <laughs>